Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and I just got back from a 10-day LARP that expended literally all of my backup videos as I romped through the woods in a fancy doublet. So now I'm looking to relax with a nice, easy topic, meaning that today, it's time to talk about the best race in the world to make soup out of, the Tortle. I'm gonna talk about the brief history of the Tortle as presented in the Tortle Package, charity supplement for the Tomb of Annihilation, and I'm gonna go over its stats so that you can play your Master Uguay in your own games. As always, keep in mind that a lot of this is just my opinion, so if you feel that I'm not turtly enough for the Turtle Club, feel free to win your race however you want. But with that out of the way, let's begin. So the Tortle as a concept began its tenure in 5e as part of a supplement that Wizards of the Coast put out to raise money for the charity Extra Life, and it was meant as a small little side adventure for groups that are running Tomb of Annihilation, not unlike how Death House is an optional adventure for groups that play Curse of Strahd. The mini-venture, frustratingly named the Tortle Package, spends time describing the Snout of Omgar, which is a location in Tomb of Annihilation that goes relatively unnoticed in the main game, but gets fleshed out here as the primary home location for the Tortle race. A Tortle in case the imagery isn't enough, is just a big turtle person that does turtle things and has a penchant for being a turtle. They stay so secluded in their small little slice of island, which separated from mainland Shult during the spell plague, that the rest of the world pretty much doesn't even know that they exist. Those creatures who do uncover the snout of Amgar are treated to what is absolutely the nicest primitive tribe they've ever seen, with turtles helping anyone and everyone they come across. So it's not uncommon for a ship to wreck near a turtle home, only for the survivors to wake up being carried to shore on the backs of a giant sea turtle, thinking that maybe they drank too much of the seawater. When a a turtle has finished helping whoever it needs to help, they send off the person and go back to their normal life of being a motherfucking turtle. And the normal life of a motherfucking turtle is one formed out of a set routine that every turtle instinctually follows. When a turtle is hatched from its egg, along with up to a dozen brothers and sisters, the turtle spends one year learning from its parents all of the important things that a turtle must know in order to hunt, survive, and live a peaceful life. Soon after, the turtle's parents will die, and that little orphan will have to go out into the wilderness and set up a home of its own. Neighbors aren't uncommon, but a turtle makes sure that it's completely self-sufficient within its environment so that it won't have to burden others for mundane reasons. Eventually, at some point in its life, a turtle will be hit by an overpowering sense of wanderlust, where it seeks to travel the world and discover all there is to see. It's around this period of life that most adventuring turtles discover their groups, but between the turtle idea of helpfulness and general non-violence, along with the fact that turtles are just so damn rare and the only reason why they're around is to see the sights and be tourists, the likelihood of finding a turtle adventurer anywhere in the world is just very, very, very rare. But eventually, once the turtle has drank deep from the well of life, the turtle will return back to its home and seek out another turtle of its kind, wherein they will make a nest and defend it from outsiders until the eggs eventually hatch. The turtle parents will spend a year teaching their kids everything they've learned that would be important to know, and the parents die soon after at the ripe old age of 50, wherein the children abandon the nest and the cycle begins anew. So that's all of the really important juicy bits regarding the turtles, but if you were looking to play one in your own games, then you're in luck. Turtles get bonuses to strength and wisdom, a free proficiency in survival, a natural weapon in the form of claws, the ability to hold their breath for a full hour, and a permanent AC of 17 on account of their turtle shells that prevent them from wearing armor, but compensates them by letting them retreat into their shell as an action to add an even crazier plus 4 AC on top of that. As a race, turtles really fill the role of clerics and druids, and I do very much enjoy the permanent AC, because it means that you can play a race that would normally have to put points into dexterity just so that it can stay alive, and so now you can use those points somewhere else, which is a breath of fresh air in a game where dexterity is normally so universally important. The inability to wear armor is a little little annoying, especially because there's some magic armor that exists in the world that has some really nice abilities, but it also means that your armor can never be removed from you, and you can still use shields, so it really isn't all that bad. All in all, no matter what class you choose, you will always have an abundance of total power. But that'll about do it! I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, join a clan of ninjas, make a best-selling comic book, and maybe pledge to my Patreon so that I can afford the pizza bill that comes with training your own amphibious martial artists. But yeah, Davy out.